For those of you who are interested in philosophy and haven't yet stumbled across Ollie Leonard's channel Philosophy Tube, I strongly recommend that you go and watch his videos and subscribe to his channel. Unlike me, he actually studies this stuff. I just dabble. Now, a while back, Ollie posted a video in which he examines the philosophical concept of presentism. In it, Ollie plays two parts, future Ollie and present Ollie. I haven't spliced two videos together to misrepresent him. Now, I enjoy watching Ollie's videos, and I generally find them to be both entertaining and enlightening. This video, however, as entertaining as it was, I found to be a little off the mark. Ollie defines presentism as follows. It's pretty easy to explain presentism. Only the present exists. If we were to make a list of everything that exists, only present things would be on it. The nature of the present is always changing, but there are no things that are not temporally present. This is a good starting point, but the devil, as always, is in the details. Presentism, at least as I understand it, is not the assertion that nothing has existed before the present instant, and that nothing will exist after the present, only that it does not now exist. And while we're on the subject of tense... Hmm, okay, it's an interesting idea. So the past and the future don't exist, just this one moment, the present. That all depends on what you mean by exist, doesn't it? Normally we use the word exist to refer to things that appear in the present, which is to say that the word is used in the present tense. And in that tense, it is false to say that the past or the future exist, since neither of them are temporarily present. Anyway, Ollie goes on to make a couple of objections to presentism that I will attempt to address. In order to make the grounding objection, we first have to assume two things, both of which are pretty intuitive. Firstly, we need to assume that we can make true statements about the past and the future. For instance, it will rain on Tuesday, or Napoleon fought at Waterloo. These sorts of things can be true. I disagree with regards to the future, but this may be a semantic thing. Yes, we can make statements about the past or the future that may turn out to be true, but is that sufficient? Any statement made about the future, except those that are statements of logical necessity, may or may not be true, but we can't necessarily assign a truth value until such time as the referenced event has actually happened. If you say that it will rain on Tuesday, I have no realistic method for assigning a truth value to your claim until Tuesday finally arrives and we observe that it is indeed raining. Such statements are future contingent and cannot be assigned truth values until their contingencies are realized, at least according to Aristotle. Similarly, a statement about the past cannot be said to be true unless we have good reason to believe that it is true, which will rely on evidence that exists in the present. We can't actually observe the past, but we can observe the present and draw conclusions from what we see. We can infer the prior existence of things from their effects on the state of the universe in the present. The common element is present evidence. Without it, we can make statements that may indeed be true, but we can't actually assign a truth value to those statements. Secondly, we have to assume that truth depends on what exists. For instance, grass is green is true because there exists something called grass which has the property of greenness. And there are no unicorns is true because zero unicorns exist. The fancy way of saying this is that truth supervenes on existence. Presentism seems to be incompatible with these two assumptions, because if the past and the future don't exist, then we can't make true statements about them. T-Rex was 40 feet long is as true as Abraham Lincoln is King of Mars. There exists no thing to make this statement true. No truth maker. Statements about the past and the future are literally false, which is irritating because we use them rather a lot. I think we have another semantic issue here. If the truth of a statement, whether it is actually true, not whether we can accurately assign a truth value, is dependent on what exists in the present, then the natural consequence is that statements about the past and future must be false. And that's why I don't agree with this assumption. I would instead say that the truth of a statement is predicated on existence at the subject time. This allows us to make true statements about the past or the future still predicated on existence, just modified to temporally align the subject and the existence on which it supervenes. Present evidence seems to indicate that at the time that T-Rex existed, when that time was the present, it was true that at least one T-Rex was about 40 feet long. The truth of that statement is not weakened by the fact that no T-Rex is known to currently exist. 
As for Abraham Lincoln currently being king of Mars, current evidence would appear not to support it. As such, the statement that it is as true as your statement about the T-Rex is fairly self-evidently false, no matter which model of time you apply. And now we get to the really fun part. More specifically, the aspect of special relativity often referred to as the relativity of simultaneity. The problem is, special relativity tells us that there is no such thing as absolute simultaneity. Whether two events appear to be simultaneous will depend on your frame of reference. You can think that two things look simultaneous to you, but somebody in a different frame of reference might see them as not simultaneous. The key word here is appears. The basic principle of the relativity of simultaneity is that two events will appear to occur at different times for different observers. All observers who are equidistant from both effects at the moment of observation will observe them to occur simultaneously, while all other observers will see the events happening at different times. Let's take two events occurring one light year away from observer A one year in the past. Light from the events will reach the observer at the same time, and the events will appear simultaneous in that observer's local frame of reference. Now, let's position observer B on a line through the two events, but one light year further away from one of the events. That observer will see the events occurring one year apart, and will not see them as being simultaneous at all. But, if observer B measures the distance to the events and adjusts the observations for the conditions of the observation, it is reasonable for the observer to then conclude that the events did indeed happen at the same time, just as observed, and hopefully confirmed by careful measurement, by observer A. The same is true of any arbitrary observer. Given the relative positions and motions of the events to the point of observation, it seems possible to adjust the observations to confirm the simultaneity. This is a controversial view because simultaneity implies that there is a privileged frame of reference which is expressly forbidden in relativity, all of which may not actually be relevant. The existence of a single instantaneous now does not imply that all events do in fact occur simultaneously. Let's revisit Ollie's definition of presentism. The nature of the present is always changing, but there are no things that are not temporally present. If the present is changing, then we can say that events have occurred, that the th things that exist now will continue to have existed. They may not continue to exist in the present, but their previous existence is trivially acknowledged. To claim otherwise is patently absurd. I'd love to hear any feedback on the above, especially if you spot something wrong with it, or can contribute something I may not have considered. Here are a few points to consider, though. First, presentism is consistent with the law of conservation of energy, which seems at odds with the growing block universe model. Eternalism seems to require that the total mass energy of the universe be either infinite or zero, which may be the case, but seems strange at best. And finally, presentism appears to avoid all of those pesky temporal paradoxes the sci-fi movies are always invoking. <laughs>